Those that are here in person, those that are watching across the internet, we thank you for being a part of our worship, being a part of our worship experience on the day. Isn't God a good God? He is a great God, and we ought to give him praise because he's worthy to be praised. We want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here, the ones that are watching online. At this time, we're going to go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you saying thank you right now, God. We thank you for all of your many blessings, God. We pray, God, that you continue to just keep your hand upon us, God, protecting us from all the fiery darts of the devil, God, that will come try to beset us, God, off our path, that we may continue to run the race that you have set for us to run, individually and as a church embodied together, God. God, we pray that you bless this service, that it may be what you have it to be, God. Bless the one that's going to bring the word, God, that it may bring a word from on high that will bless the souls of those that are here and those that are watching online, God. We bless those that are here right now. We pray for those that are on the way and give them traveling grace, God. Give them traveling grace back home as they depart from this place today, God. We just thank you for all that you've done, God. We just pray that you continue to keep your loving arms around us, that we may continue to flourish, God, that we may continue to grow, God, that we may continue to do the work that you have set out for the Abundant Love Fellowship Church, God. Bless all those that are member partners, God. Bless those that are potential member partners, God. Bless those that, that, have, that have left and gone on, God. Just continue to just bless each and every person with the blessings that they stand in need of, God. Bless our pastor that he continues to teach and preach your uncompromising gospel. Bless his family, God. Bless his family. Bless each and every family that is tied into the Abundant Love Fellowship Church, God. Bless each and every church across this, this city, God, across this state, God, across this country, God, that stands believing on you that Jesus lived, died, rose again, and is coming back one day to receive his people, God. Bless the praise team as they come to give worship today, God. Oh, God, just let your spirit saturate this place right now. Let your spirit befall upon each and every one of us, God. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is love, God. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there's healing, God. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there's clarity, God. Everything that we should ever want and need is in a place right now because you are here, God. And we love you and thank you for it. Oh, just have your way in this place today, God. Continue to bless and touch. And that's our prayer that we pray today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this place this morning. God has been too good to us for us to sleep on in this morning. Amen. Happy Father's Day to the fathers. And it's a blessed day for everyone else who is here, everyone who's on the way, those who can't be here that are watching. Happy Father's Day to you as well. We just want to take a minute to praise the Lord, and we invite you to join us. If you want to come on up front, if you want to grab your partner to praise with, just get with it.
just want to praise you forever and ever and ever.
Father's Day, y'all. And how appropriate to thank our Heavenly Father for all of His goodness toward us. Amen? Because He deserves it. Amen? It's so good to see everyone out this morning. Dads, you're looking very handsome. And we're so happy to be able to celebrate you on today. Ladies, can we stand and just give these amazing men of ALFC a round of applause? Thank you, thank you, thank you. At this time, I stand to acknowledge our visitors. If you have not officially joined Abundant Love Fellowship Church, I ask that you please stand. I promise I won't make you talk, but I do want to love on you. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Ross and First Lady, we would just again like to welcome you. We thank you so much for joining us on this special day. We know that you could have went to so many other churches this morning, but we are glad that God led you here. And our prayer for you is that whatever it is you stand in the need of, he speaks a word of encouragement, of love and direction for your week. Amen. Amen. Abundant love. Let's love on our visitors. Amen. 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 Abundant love. On behalf of Pastor Ross and First Lady Ross, I would just like to say a very special thank you to all of us who served on yesterday as we celebrated the life of Minister Anna Arocha. Whether you serve through our music ministry, whether you serve through our usher ministry, whether you serve through our culinary and hospitality ministry, I just want to say thank you. It's one thing to put love in the name of our church, and it's another thing to walk that out. So thank you for having love in action and love in abundance. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask our, uh, our staff to please come as we prepare our tithes and offerings. Amen. If you need an envelope, please just raise your hand and uh, one of these gentlemen will get that for you. If you don't have cash or check today, no problem. You are welcome to go see Brother Eric at the back and he can help you with our card reader. Amen. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, we come before you and first and foremost, we declare that you are a good Father, and because you're a good father, God, we thank you for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed on us, not because we're so good, Father God, but because you are, and for that we say thank you. Out of obedience to your word, Father God, we bring our tithes and we bring our offerings at this time. And we ask, Father God, that they be acceptable sacrifices unto you, Father God. We pray that these be used for the uplifting and the building of your kingdom. We pray, Father God, that through these seeds, Lord God, others will get to know you, Lord God. That through these seeds, others will be blessed and encouraged, Father God. And through these seeds, Lord God, we are able to be your hands and feet, showing your love to our community, Father. God. And Lord God, as we sow these seeds, we ask, Father God, that you honor the obedience, Father God, of our hearts and those things that we stand in need of, Father God. We ask that you continue to be the great Father that you are and meet those needs according to your riches. We thank you and we praise you. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 
Amen. As we collect our tithes and offerings, I do ask that you direct your attention to the screen for a few short announcements. Thank you. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, June the 18th, and these are your weekly announcements. Save the date for our pastor and wife anniversary celebration on Sunday, July the 9th at 3 p.m. There will be more details to come. The Kurt Carr Tribute Concert will be held on Saturday, August the 26th at 6 p.m. at Second Missionary Baptist Church. Tickets are available for purchase on eventbrite.com, One Price Fashions, or see Sister Bridget Boggess. New Members Orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and via Zoom link. Please contact Minister Paula Smith for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live, so join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can sow your tithes and offering via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button, or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via our Cash App to ALF Offering. And on behalf of Pastor and First Lady Ross, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love.
Are there any witnesses in the house this morning? Glory be to God. If you are a witness that God is your all in all, I want you to find about five people and just tell them who he is to you. Come on. Just find about five people and tell them who he is to you. Oh, oh, oh. deserves some praise for that right there. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Isn't it wonderful to be in relationship with somebody that can be whatever you need him to be, whenever you need him to be. Glory be to God. Somebody going to get that in a minute. Hallelujah. But when you are in a relationship with a God that's able Oh, y'all don't. I got the wrong crowd this morning. But a God that's able to be whatever you need him to be. Hallelujah. How many of you, how many of you will just give God some praise for being your healer? How many of you will give God praise for being your savior? How many of you will give God praise for being your deliverer? God, you know you wouldn't be where you are if it wasn't for God being your deliverer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Tell your neighbor, don't take him for granted. Don't take him for granted. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all. I'm determined today. Hallelujah. Sister Montgomery, I think you with me. I'm determined today to have church if I got to do it all by myself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm tired in my body, but not in my spirit. Hallelujah. Dr. Hamilton, there's a fire that's burning in me this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I refuse to let the devil put it out. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Mm. God is a great God. Listen, we are, today is Father's Day. Ah, ah, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I, no, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. We, 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 we really love our mothers, and I get it. And you should. Amen. But how many of you know there would be no child without a father? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we are here to celebrate 
Amen. Our fathers. Glory be to God. Listen, listen. We want to celebrate do a special recognition for all of the fathers who are 70 and above. Glory be to God. And I want y'all to come up. But if you are a father and you are 70 years old or above, we want you to come. We want you to come. We want you to come. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now listen, these guys is coming, y'all. Don't think that they don't have no swag. So guys, as you come, I want you to show your swag. Amen. Glory be to God. Just because I'm a little bit older don't mean I lost my swag. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There it is. There it is. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, y'all. One, two, three. Come on. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, listen. We want to say to all of our fathers, amen. These these, these men, these men have lived life long enough to have wisdom. Glory be to God. And the Bible teaches us that wisdom is the chief thing. Amen. Amen. And, it's, and I honor them this morning. I honor them this morning. These men have been through some things in their life, but they did not go through life with their eyes wide shut. They have learned some things through their trials and their tribulations, the storms and the rain that they have endured in their life. And glory be to God. And can I tell every, every man, every woman, every boy and every girl, amen, they can tell you something. Glory be to God. How many of y'all know they can tell you something? Glory be to God because God has blessed them. Amen. And we honor them this morning. Glory be to God. Uh, please stand on your feet all over the building. Glory be to God. And I want you to point to these gentlemen and tell them we cannot be us without you. Oh, come on. Give God some praise. Come on. Let's honor these men this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be God. We, we thank God for them. Amen. Amen. And then and, and, and listen. Now, now y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Y'all sit down. Now, every father, regardless of your age, stand up. Every father, regardless. Oh, that, oh praise the Lord. Regardless of your age. Come on, y'all. Let's give God. Let's honor these fathers too. Hallelujah. Good fathers. Hallelujah great fathers in the building hallelujah and we honor all of the fathers that are streaming with us this morning for whatever reason you could not be here this morning but we honor you glory be to god we honor you we honor you and we thank god for you so listen as we celebrate fathers today amen amen our special events committee has prepared some, um, I guess they're calling it goodie bags, amen. Glory be, uh, good bags for good fathers. Come on, y'all. And, and, and so they have prepared this for you guys, amen. And there are refreshments for everybody, but we just want to celebrate fathers. One more time, jump to your feet and give God great praise for these great fathers. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We honor you. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. God is so awesome. Amen. God is so awesome. Amen. How many of y'all got plans for your father today? Oh, 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 no. Okay, maybe y'all didn't hear me. Brother Mike, I, I may, maybe they didn't hear me. How many of y'all have plans for your fathers today? Okay, okay, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was. They didn't, they didn't hear. Amen. Praise be to God. 
Amen. Minister Paula, I thought, oh, oh. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. It is a wonderful thing. Amen. And speaking as a father, it's a wonderful thing to be honored. Amen. Um, you know, sometimes people say, well, um, you know, that's what you should do. But that's not the issue. It's good to be honored and acknowledged for what you do. Amen. Come on. Come on. That, hey. I mean, even on your job, you want to be honored. Some people say, all I want is the paycheck. No, you want to be honored too. Amen. For the job that you do. Amen. And we just thank God for all of these fathers. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many of you are ready for the word of God today? I know, I know y'all got celebrations that you want to do. Amen. But, but amen. Uh, how many of you know that the greatest father needs some time too? Amen. So, amen. If you're ready for the word of God today, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and turn with us to the, to the gospel according to St. Mark. Uh, We're going we to we we read a little bit today. Amen. Praise be unto God. Glory be to God. Mark chapter 5. Amen. Amen. Somebody give, somebody give Minister Evelyn a microphone. Amen. For those of you, uh, it, it, it is something about when this woman of God reads the word of God. Glory be to God. Amen. If, you, if you've never been with us on Wednesday night, you don't know. Amen. But you're going to find out right now. Glory be to God. Now, now um, uh, Minister Evelyn, Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. And then we're going to skip down to verses 35 through 43. Amen. So starting with verses 21 through 24. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again mm -hmm. by boat to the other side, a great multitude followed, gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet mm -hmm. and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. How many of you know that just one touch from God, oh my God, can change your whole world? Glory be to God. Read. 24, 24. So Jesus went with him, mm. and a great multitude followed him and thorned him. Stop right there. I don't care if you follow me. As long as Jesus goes with me. Uh, do I have any witnesses in here? Oh, God. If, if, if I'm going anywhere, I need him to be everywhere when he goes with me. Glory be to God. Now, let's go to verses 35 through 43. While Hallelujah. he was still speaking, mm -hmm. some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Mm. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word Ooh. that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Whose report are you going to believe this morning? Glory be to God. You know what the doctor said. You know what the bank said. You know what the lawyer said. But whose report? Glory. And he permitted no one to hmm. follow him <laughs> except Peter, James, and John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brothers of James. Mm -hmm. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a triumph and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, mm. but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. Mm -hmm. But when he had put them all outside, Ooh, God. he took the father and the mother of the child 
and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Tabitha, come. Which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the child, the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said something and said that something should be given her to eat. Mm. Glory be to God. I want to, I want to encourage our fathers this morning on this subject relating to this word, the power of a father's love. The power of a father's love. Mm. First of all, I, I, I want to again say to all of the fathers, happy Father's Day. And one of the things that personally I appreciate about Father's Day is that it puts the focus on one of the major elements of our existence, which is fatherhood. Fatherhood is, as well as motherhood, is, is, is one of the most important elements of the home, the society, and the world. Because the reality of humanity is that as the family goes, so goes the community, so goes the nation, and so goes the world. The family is the backbone of the society. It's the backbone of any nation, and fatherhood is the backbone of the family. Because the weight of the family is on the shoulders of the fathers. Because God designed it that way. We see that in creation, God made the male first, giving him instruction, giving him work, and giving him power. Thereby giving the male the weight of responsibility because God knew he was going to give him a family to be responsible for. So God designed him in such a way to carry the weight of responsibility for his wife and his children. The weight of leadership, the weight of provision, the weight of protection, guardianship, and support. And part of that work that God gave the male was not just to till the ground or work on a job but also to work his role as a father and carry the weight of his responsibility in the lives of his family. Now, whenever God assigns responsibility, he also gives power to fulfill what he assigns. You would never find God expecting something from you that he didn't give you the power to fulfill. If God expects you to be steadfast and unmovable, he provides the power to do it. If God expects you to be victorious, he provides the power to be victorious. If God expects you to help your children as a father, regardless of their age, he provides the power for you to be able to do that. But on the other hand, when you don't know the power that God has given you, you don't use it or you abuse the privilege because you didn't know oh God. And can I tell you that there are a lot of fathers that don't know. They don't know the power of their influence. They don't know the power of their impact. They don't know the power of their intercession. They don't know that how 
how they live in front of their children influences their children's behavior. Oh, God. Are uh, you telling your child not to cuss, but you're cussing your wife out every day? Uh, that has influence on your child. They don't know that their impact in the child's life is life lasting. Glory be to God. How many of you know that, that what you do before your little child will, will attach itself to that adult child? Glory be to God. They don't know that the intercession spiritually and physically brings stability, affirmation, and even healing in their children's life. It's not just the mother's assignment to pray and support a child. It's the father's responsibility to do it too. Ah, oh, God. And when we as fathers step into our responsibility as fathers, God honors us and supports us. Ah, oh, God. But the devil knows that as well, and he does not want us to be strengthened to fulfill. So he comes against us in a plethora of ways to cause us to abort our mission and not fulfill our assignment as fathers. Uh, uh, how many of you know that the devil don't play fair? Oh uh, yeah, he, he, he'll come any way he can come and do anything that he got to do in order to get his way in your life. He'll use baby mama drama to wake you abort your mission. He, he will use depression and discouragement to try to make you abort your mission. He'll use selfishness and, and greed. He'll use pride and evil persuasions in an attempt to make the father abort the mission of fatherhood. But can I tell you fathers, don't let the devil spiritually emasculate you. Oh God, mentally and spiritually emasculate you in your relationship with your children. And can I be real this morning, just because you and the mother didn't make it don't mean you and your child can't make it. Oh, I wish I felt God in here. Uh, just because uh, uh, you chose the wrong person uh, don't mean that's the child's fault. Oh, God, just because y'all can't get along, just because y'all can't be adults, don't mean that child is to blame. Oh, God, I, I wish I had some men in here that would just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't care if we don't make it. I got to make it with my child. Glory be to God because that's the seed from me. That's my that's my daughter. That, that's my son. And I got to make sure that I make it with my child. And I ain't going to let no devil stop me from making it with my child. Oh, God, I wish I had about four or five men that would just say, Lord, help me make it. Help me make it with my child. Oh, she needs me. He needs me. And I'm not going to stand by with all this power that you gave me and let the devil defeat me when it comes to my child. One of the key elements of power of fatherhood is love. Because for a man, what and who we love, we take care of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's an interesting piece in, in, in our makeup because what and who we love, we do for. We might not say it, but we're going to do it. We may not talk much about it, but we'll give everything we got to make it happen. Because when we are driven by love, we become tenacious. Oh, brothers, don't leave me out here by myself. High five another brother and say, oh, oh my God, I got 
pit bull tendencies. And when I love something, I'm going to protect it. When I love something, I'm going to make sure it has everything it needs. And when something comes against what I love, oh, you're going to have to deal with the dog in me. Oh, I wish I had some brothers in here that got a little bit of dog in them. Oh, God, go to barking. Go to barking. And everything that comes against your wife, everything that comes against your family, everything that comes against you as a male, oh my God, the bark is just a warning. But tell your neighbor, I'll bite you too. I'll bite you until you lose my daughter. I'll bite you until you lose my son. I'll bite you. And this is what we see in the text. A father being driven by the power of his love for his daughter. Jairus, in the text, his name means God enlightens. Ooh. Jairus was a man of position. He was a synagogue ruler. Now he was a synagogue ruler. Can, can, we just, can we just teach a little bit? He was a synagogue ruler called the Hazan. And the Hazan had the responsibility of maintaining the building of the, of the synagogue and organizing prayer services. Oh. The man. Hmm was supposed to be the one organizing prayer. Okay, let me say it again. The man was supposed to be the one organizing prayer. Let's talk about why we pray. We pray because there's a need. We pray out of relationship. So the man should be the one leading the family, glory be to God, into relationship and into prayer. Oh, God. How many men know that when things come against your family, this is not a go ask your mama kind of thing. This is the kind of thing that you need to step out and lead your family in prayer out of your relationship with your God. The Hazan would sometimes teach in the synagogue. And they also took care of the Torah, the scrolls, and, and, and other sacred writings in the synagogue. Jairus was a man of faith and dedication to Jesus. He was a father of a daughter. He was a father who loved his daughter dearly. And there is something about a father-daughter relationship that is very unique. Uh, a father's love for his daughter will equal to that of his sons, but it's unique in its manifestation. Mm. A father would do for his daughter while he teaches his son to do for himself. Oh, God. It's not that he prefers one over the other, but that his son will one day have someone to do for, and his daughter will have someone to do for her. Oh God, y'all y'all don't hear me because the design of God is the daughter is to be covered and the son is to provide the covering. Oh God. So the father daughter relationship is unique because as her covering anything that attacks his daughter instantly becomes his enemy. Oh God. Any physical attack, any mental attack attack any spiritual attack becomes his enemy and he attacked what attacks his daughter oh god can i tell you that he'll fight for his daughter and his son but he has another focus when it comes to the daughter is not driven by anything other than love oh my god oh god can i tell 
know you. Oh, that's the kind of relationship that I have with my daughter. Oh, because you see, here it is. Anything that comes against her is my enemy. But now she's covered by her husband. Oh, God. But now, fathers, I don't get gender off. Now I cover him and her. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that would just high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, you never quit being a father. Oh, God. She double covered. Oh, God. I need every woman in here that got a daddy and a husband to just give God some praise because you double covered. It's in the text. Now, the genre says 12-year-old daughter is sick to the point of death. The Bible does not give the sickness, but it was serious enough to threaten his daughter's life. Fathers, can you imagine your baby girl being so sick that she is at the point of leaving you. Oh God, no medicine is going to save her. No surgeries are going to help her. No earthly means is present to help your daughter oh God fathers that's a weight that seeks to weaken you at your very core and you try everything that you can do but your resources are not adequate enough to fulfill your need and can I tell you as a male when we can't fix it when we can't make it better when we can't change it we feel helpless and we feel hopeless and less than a man because we can't do what we're wired to do. Ah, oh God, so it comes out in frustration because we're tormented with the fact that we can't fix this thing. We get angry because we're limited. We get aggressive because we're pressured. And it's not criminal. It's because we are driven by our love for our child. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, he just loves me. That's why he moves around like he does he just loves me that's why he's so focused uh, that's why he's so intentional uh, not because of his nature but because of his love oh uh, god look at the text and see what his father does in his state now of all of the emotions that is going through his mind and his spirit i feel like preaching he seeks out Jesus, because if anybody can help him and his daughter, it's Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, can I put a pin right here? Oh, high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, nobody can do you like Jesus. I don't care how much money they got. They can't do you like Jesus. I don't care how popular they are. They can't do you like Jesus. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Oh, God, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can even ask or think. And I don't know nobody else that's able to do that but Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my get up in the morning. Jesus, my go to bed at night. Jesus, my you sure I'm a Shia. Jesus, my my battle axe, Jesus, my paw in the valley, Jesus, my bright and morning star, Jesus, my savior, Jesus, my deliverer, Jesus, my victory, Jesus, my joy, can't nobody do me like fathers, I want to tell you, glory be to God, when you can't do it, 
Jesus can. What you can't fix, Jesus can. What you can't work out, Jesus can. But you got to seek him. And think about this. Jesus is the doorway to the Father. And when you seek Jesus, you are just seeking your heavenly Father. And every son and every daughter, every mother and every father needs a father. Oh, I wish I had some real people in here that would just lean over to your neighbor and say, I'm somebody's father, but I need a father. Oh, God. Oh, can I testify? My father is going on, but I still got a father. Oh, yeah. I got a father that'll come see about me in the midnight hour. I got a father that every time I call him, I can get him. I got a father that has all power in his hand. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I must be your brother. I must be your sister because we got the same Y'all don't hear me. We got the same father because the way that you, y'all don't mind if I preach it like I feel it, the way that you describe your father, I describe my father just like that. Well, let me ask you, is your father named Jehovah? Is your father named Adonai? Is your father named Jesus? Is your father named I am that I am high five your neighbor and say welcome to the family we got the same Jairus 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 a father that loved his daughter a father that going now trying to get some help from his father but he did not realize that when he went to Jesus he was going to his heavenly father a heavenly father that's not limited a heavenly father that's not helpless a heavenly father who is available cause I heard I heard I heard daddy say that in the times of trouble I'm a very present help y'all missed it right there high five another neighbor and say neighbor you got help with your children you got help with your situation you got help I'm not a heavenly father that's able Oh God, Jairus, he finds Jesus and Dr. Hammond when he sees him, he falls down from the weight of being a father in distress, but he also falls down in reverence of Jesus, his source, and he falls down in humble submission to the power of his father. Fathers, can I tell you that you got somebody you can fall at his feet, not out of fear, but out of submission. Because submission is the right source, it opens the door for your help. I feel God in here. And when we submit to greater, that's why man submits to God. Because God is is greater in our submission we access the greater high five your neighbor and say neighbor where are your keys to the house the father has given you keys to the house open your door and get your blessing open your door and get your blessing open your door and get your blessing oh god men Submit to God. Submit to 
his power. Submit to his will. Submit to his way. Submit to his purpose for your life. The text tells us that it was after submission came the request. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. It was after submission comes the request. Just like you can't go to your natural father just any kind of way. You got to go in humble submission. The shame it is with God. You got to go in humble submission to God. And I heard him say, then make your request known. Ah, God, you can't approach God any kind of way and expect something from him. But high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to come correct to get blessed adequately. Y'all don't hear me. The reason some of us ain't blessed like we need to be blessed because we're coming wrong. Don't come in there with no pride. Don't come in there with no arrogance. Don't come in there acting like God owes you something. No, you got to go in there that say, Father, I stretch my hand. I feel all right to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy hand from me, well, well, shall I go? You all I got. You are mine, and I am yours. And I heard him say, come on in the house. Now, wait a minute. Jesus, ah, oh God, he goes to Jesus. He says, my little daughter is at the point of death. And God, I pray that you would come and lay your hands on my daughter that she may be healed and live. Oh, God, how many of you know that one touch from the master is enough? to heal one touch is enough to deliver one touch is enough to change your whole world and turn it upside down now Jesus Mark says he goes with him but there was some folk that were following can I tell you everybody that follows you to your miracle ain't with you for your miracle some of them just want to go so they can see and have some gossip to talk about but tell your neighbor I don't mind if you're coming but don't come empty handed you better grab your faith if you're coming with me you better grab your belief if you're coming to me you better grab the spirit of the living God if you're coming with me cause I'm believing God to do what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard God now he goes with him but Jesus was interrupted with the knee from a woman with the issue of blood who was healed by touching the hem of his garment Jesus tells the woman in front of Jairus your faith has made you whole but while Jesus was speaking to this woman Jairus was waiting oh God can I go there how many times do you feel like God got 
fluctuating while he's blessing over here blessing over there blessing your family blessing your friends blessing everybody around you and there you are you're waiting but can I encourage you wait on him wait on him wait on him I heard the Lord say that they that wait on the Lord will 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 renew their straight mount up like wings of an eagle they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint high five your neighbor and say neighbor your miracle is waiting on your weight your miracle is there your miracle is ordained your miracle got your name on it so just just wait on it baby just wait on it but they talking about me keep waiting they gonna be looking at you crazy oh god they running my name down but wait on it because he may not come when you want him but it's all oh god Jairus is waiting but while he's waiting to take Jesus to his daughter he gets word that his daughter has died and he was not told to trouble the master any further can you imagine the pain can you imagine the hurt can you imagine the agony of this father he got Jesus and he was on his way to his daughter he did what he could he got who he needed but he didn't get what he needed to who he needed it for he worshipped him he fell down before him he made his request known but his help was interrupted and now his daughter is dead fathers have you ever been there where you did everything you could do and it's still not working out you prayed for it you worship through it but now you're crying because of it and you're told by somebody to just let it go but I need to tell your fathers hold on God's love won't let it go your love for your son won't let it go your love for your daughter won't let it go your love for them won't let it go but before you give up just know that you got a father who loves you and he's not going to let it go touch your neighbor and say neighbor I would wanting to let it go but God said no because I'm about to do something out of my love for you that's gonna bless your child I came by to tell you that your heavenly father is not going to let your child go your heavenly father is not going to let your family go your heavenly father is not gonna let you go ah oh God I know the enemy is saying let it go but God says I'm not letting it go I know you're hurt but I'm not letting you go I know you're playing pain but I'm not letting you go because I'm your father and you're my son and just like you love your children I love you and just like you do for your children you are my responsibility and just like you got them I got you I feel God in here I need every man every father to know you're not out here by yourself your heavenly father he got you let me 
show you how good he got you. The Bible says that when Jesus heard the word that was spoken to his child, he enlightened the father and said, be not, be not. I'm going to have church all by myself. Be not afraid. Only believe. What does it mean? I don't need your help. I don't need you to do another, another. I don't need you to make it right. All I need is you to believe in your father. Believe in my power. Believe in my strength believe in my omnipotence believe in my omniscience believe in my presence and I will do it oh God now that was some I'll preach the rest of it another time that was some that start laughing at Jesus but fathers I know you got some people that's laughing at you cause they don't think your father is gonna come through but tell all of your laughing friends hold on just a little while longer and you're gonna see just how much my father loves me the Bible said that Jesus he spoke to the daughter and he said to Letha come on oh, look at your neighbor and say to Letha come on well what does that mean that mean little girl get up oh God and how many of you know if God said get up everything that's holding you gotta let you go if God says get up everything that got you bound gotta loose you I heard him say to Lita come my and the Bible said that at his word the little girl she got up she rose I stopped by to tell every father keep on keep on keep on keep on whatever you do keep on because your daughter needs you to keep on your son needs you to keep on believing to keep on trusting to keep on reaching to keep on interceding and the Bible said that the daughter arose how many of you in here you need God to raise some stuff that you thought was over oh God I feel your presence oh, how many of you need God to resurrect what your friend said was over what your family said was over how many of you know that he's able brother Richmond that's why I can't take him for granted because every time I have a new need she shows me a new side of himself just when I get used to his power to heal he does something else just then when I get used to his power to deliver he shows another side of himself but tell your neighbor I I'm trying to figure him out God anyway 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 that you bless me I will be satisfied I need about 30 of y'all to jump to your feet and give God a anyway blessing I'm praising you for my child I'm praising you for my son I'm praising for my daughter and in any way you bless me I will I 
I will be satisfied. Somebody said, well, pastor, that's a story in the Bible. No, that's a page out of my life. When you believe God, oh God, glory be to God. When you believe God, hallelujah, notice what he said. He said, Father, all I need you to do is just believe. You ain't got the power. I do. You ain't got the strength. You can't make it happen, but I can. So just believe. And can I tell you, fellas, that believing ain't a gender thing. Believing is a spiritual thing. He honored in love. A father who loved. Oh, y'all missed it, man. Y'all missed it. He honors you when you love like he loves you. And you say, but pastor, you don't understand all of the stuff that's coming against me. I don't. But I do understand this, that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper if you believe God as the scriptures say. And that's a total submission to him. Ministers are coming. I know I know men sometimes we say well pass well 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 man you just don't know what I got to go through to do what I got to do. I got one question are your children worth it? Are they worth it? So I got to sacrifice. But they worth it. Get out of yourself so you can be a father to your children. But they cuss me out. Where did they get it from? don't appreciate me do you appreciate them because a seed produces after its own kind oh I know I know I know I know I know it's it's it's, it's just tough but me and you told me to give it to you straight no chaser you say they they done got grown now, Pastor, and I can't tell them nothing. You reap. Oh, I know man up is next week, but can we go there now? You reap what you... I don't know why that boy is slapping his wife. What, did you slap his mother? I don't know why he's so hard-headed. Have you obeyed God? But God yet loves you. In your waywardness, your hard-headedness, be still loves you have you ever thought that if God loved you based on how you treat him hmm. somebody said well I treat him good but do you treat him good enough for him to wake you up every morning do you treat him good enough for him to provide for you 
Do you, do you treat him good enough for him to keep you employed when you're doing everything to become unemployed? Oh, I'll answer for you. None of us have done anything that good for God to deserve the mercy, the grace, and the love that God gives to us. So fathers, I just want to encourage you. You say, well, pastor, I can't love like God. Yes, you can. You can. Why? When he lives in you. Oh, I'm a living witness that you will do stuff that you never thought you would be able to do. When he lives in you. Can I tell you that God wants to have that kind of relationship with you? And if you're not saved, I didn't say a part of membership of the church. I said saved. Saved in relationship with Jesus. Not out of religion, but saved out of relationship. That you ask him to come into your life and make your life his dwelling place. That you become his legs and his arms and his mouth and you speak for him you live for him you operate in his power and you say well no pastor I don't have that kind of relationship you know what that thing that's tugging at your heart right now that thing that, 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 that's in your mind right now is saying I need this type of relationship can I tell you that you can handle that right now well, Pastor, what do I have to do? All you have to do is just repeat this prayer with me. Father, come into my life. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I've sinned against you and even myself. But I believe that Jesus died for my sin. And his blood that was shed on Calvary still works today. And Father, I ask you to wash me in that blood. Wash my mind, my heart, and my spirit in that blood to make me a dwelling place for him. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my transgressions. Come into my life. Change my life. And make me what you want me to be. And I receive you now. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, congratulations. You're saved. I don't have to beg and plead. No. Just have to mean it. And when you mean it, he will come in and he will make his abode in your life. Now, I'm going to go out of my usual order that if there's anyone here or streaming today that says, Pastor Ross, that's the kind of word I need. That's the kind of food that I feel like I can grow from. And I feel the Spirit of God is telling me that Abundant Love Fellowship is the place that I need to be. And if that's you, if you are present with us today and you have a desire to become a member partner of the Abundant Love Fellowship Church, I want you to come. Or if you're online this morning and you say, well, Pastor, I, 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 yeah, I feel that. And I believe that that's God telling me that I need to unite with that church. If you're online, I want you to give us your name and a contact number, and we will make that happen. But if you're live with us today, I want you to come. I want you to come. Somebody said, well, ain't it all right for me to just want to? No, you got to show your dedication by coming. Glory be to God. If you're here, won't you come? If you're here, won't you come? Listen, somebody said... <clears throat> Well, it's Father's Day, Pastor, but then you can, you can easily remember 
then the day that you join. When did you join a bundle of love fellowship? Father's Day 2023. Glory be to God. If you're here, okay. I'm going to ask all of the men to come. All of the men. All of the men. Come on, Marcus. It'll be okay, Marcus. Come on. All of the men. And I'm loved by you. So I am. And so I am. Somebody said, well, Pastor, why? It's Father's Day. Why are you calling all of the men? Because they carry the seed. And whether they're fathers now or to be fathers or don't even want to be a father, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for men because men are necessary. Do me a favor, guys. Look at your name and say, you're necessary. You're necessary. I didn't say you were an option. You are necessary. Somebody said, well, how are we going to turn this country around? How are we going to turn our cities and our communities around? How are we going to turn our homes around? God has empowered you. He's given you what it takes to do what he's assigned you to do. And man, I want to pray for your father. We come now with all of the stuff that runs through our system. We come, Father. Some of us were never mentored as fathers. Some of us were never mentored as men. But Father, today, we come in our lack seeking your provision. And Lord, I pray now in the name of Jesus that for every man that's here, young man, old man, middle-aged man, I pray, Father God, for a renewed touch of the lives, Father. I pray, Father God, that you, being our Father, would love us to healing. Be intentional enough, Father God, that we may be made whole. Bless us, God, so that we can be a blessing in our communities and be a blessing in our homes and in our churches and in our nation and in our world, God. Father God, we know that the devil has tried his very best to take us out and make us abort our mission. But Father, we come just like Jairus and in humble submission to you, we ask you to work on us and produce through us, Father. Our children are waiting on us. Our wives and families are waiting on us. And so, God, we come to you because we believe that the wait is over. So, Father God, touch every man online, touch every man around this altar. Supply their every need, Father God. And, Father God, for all of these gyruses around this altar, enlighten them about who they are in you, what they can do in you, and who you have created and assigned them to be. Father, I thank you now. And I ask you to break every curse over their life. I ask you now, Father God, that whatever they have been damaged, all of the damage, Father, 
that has been done, God. Father God, we come now asking you that in spite of the damage, make them a new God. Creating them a clean heart. Restore God the spirit within them. Father, I pray for my brothers right now as I pray for myself, God, that you would make us better, God, stronger, God, more tenacious, God, bolder, God, that as you have loved us, that we will love our children and our children's children and our children's children's children that as you bless us we bless them Father we believe it to happen we believe it to be and in Jesus name we thank you in advance amen and amen listen to me and I want you to do me a favor the man next to you needs some encouragement just encourage the man next to you right now you don't have to know him. Don't look for somebody you know. Just encourage the man next to you. Glory be to God. Just tell him you can make it. You can be it. Whatever God has assigned to you, it's yours in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Come on, everybody stand on your feet. Hallelujah. We need y'all to praise God with us. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice and give God glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these fathers. We thank you for children and wives and family, God. And we pray now that as we leave this place, we leave Father, encouraged. We leave, Father God, with a renewed perspective. And we thank you for it. But Father God, we leave honoring you now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who present us faultless before his throne, exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be dominion, power, and glory. Henceforth now and forever. Amen. And amen. Go ahead, find about 15 people before you leave and tell them you can make it. You can make it. Hallelujah.